welcome to my God of War Ragnarok walkthrough for all of the main quests in the game. This walkthrough will offer you tips for defeating challenging enemies and bosses, solutions to every puzzle and locations of all the collectibles. I aim to cover most of the loot too. This video is part 2 as I take you through the quest for Tia. More quests will be linked down below in the pinned comments and the video description. The quest for Tia is the second quest in the game and it starts with your journey to Nidavellir. Now the first thing you need to do is go over to Atreus and get onto a boat. But before you do that there's a side quest or a favour in the game around Odin's ravens. And you need to destroy them all or kill them all. The first one you encounter is just here on top of this rock. So while you're here make sure you get it. Just get your axe out, aim, hold R2 and swing. One less battery spy. You'll notice that the Eyes of Odin favour has now unlocked and there's 48 in total that you need to get. Now you just need to help Atreus get the boat but there is going to be a little enemy encounter. After the enemy encounter you're able to interact with the boat and board it. There are plenty of resources to find while you're going down this river. Starting with this here circle just pop up on the screen. Make sure you collect that. Move forward to the fork in the path and you can go left or right. Both ways contains resource. We're going to head to the right and you just want to row over this barrel for some hack silver. From here you can get to the left side of the fork by just continuing forward and circling back round. You're going to notice another barrel in the water which you can get some more hack silver from. And then you're able to beach up here on the beach to find a chest. Hop back on the boat and continue into the next part of the river. There's some more resources here and we're going to start by heading left. Here you'll find another barrel. There's a second barrel just over here. And then circle around left here and you'll find another barrel. From here the game does want you to go straight ahead to beach the boat and open the gate by moving that wheel. But before you do there is one more piece of loot if we just head back right to where we came from. Hug the left and over in the water over here you'll get another circle to interact with. Now just head back to this wheel that's blocking your way and beach the boat on this beach here to get it unlocked. So these are wetlands, huh? The first thing you're going to need to do is just approach this water, get your axe out and freeze it so that you're able to cross it. Just cross over and instead of running straight ahead where the game wants you to go, take a right here and you're going to find your first Norna chest in the game. Norna chests are locked with runic magic and they each have different puzzles to complete them. This one requires you to destroy three vases or statues, whatever you want to call them. And you can see one of them right in front of us there with the symbol on it. Now there are three of these in total to smash in order to open the chest. We can see this one here right in front of us with the F on it. If we just take a left and look past the chest, there's another one over there. And then the final one is just back across where you jump from. Get your axe back out and you need to freeze this water here. This is going to enable you to jump up and the third one of these vases or statues is just there to destroy. With your axe, just destroy this. Call your axe back, you can jump down here. You're able to destroy the second one. And then use your axe to get the third one as well in the distance. And the Norna chest will open. first time you open a Norna chest you are going to get one of these apples that will increase your maximum health. The second time you open a Norna chest you're going to get a horn that increases your maximum rage. It keeps on going like this, it doesn't matter what order you find these chests in. However, as it, you progress you're going to need more apples and more horns to increase your health or rage. 
Now, from the Nona chest, there is one collectible that you can get here as well. Just jump back over this gap, and you want to go back to where you did before, where one of those statues were. So just freeze this water, climb back up, and you're going to find your first collectible in this area, right next to this body. Looks to be an artifact from the Dwarven Resistance. Trade Mars Brassard, father of a few dwarves you may be well familiar with. Rock may be interested in getting these back. Better in his hands than out in the open. You are now ready to proceed. So just jump back down this ledge here. Cross here. And continue where the game wants you to go. So take a zip line down and there will be an enemy encounter. Just deal with all the enemies. After the encounter and from the zip line, you may have noticed the red coffin up above. This is easy to get to. Just come over to the corner here and destroy the boxes. Press circle and climb up to reach it. Now just drop down and you want to find a chain which is just over in this direction. Drop down this ledge and the chain is right in front of you. Okay. There's got to be some way to turn the wheel on. At the top of the chain, you are able to release the wheel, but before that, just look behind you for a loot chest. <laughs> now, just release the wheel, and you're able to go back to the boat to continue on with the quest. As you pass through the wheel you just opened, there are two crates to smash through. Once you've passed under the bridge, the game wants you to head right here and dock to unlock the second wheel to proceed. However, there's a few things we can check out here before we do that. We're going to head left and you're going to see this Ugdrazil Jew. This increases your runic stat. From here, we're just going to head into this mist on the river to press circle for some more loot. From here, there is one more area to discover. And it's what I said at the start, right when from when you come under the bridge. I did say that was to continue the quest, but it's actually this beach over here to continue the quest to unlock the wheel. So just head back to the bridge where you came under and dock on this sand here. There's going to be an enemy encounter, but deal with them quickly. And I accidentally destroyed a bucket that's hanging from this tree. I didn't pick the loot up though. So once clear, destroy that bucket and you're able to pick up this item. And then right in front of you, you can use your blades to uncover this chest. From here, just back up to the right and climb up this ledge. Again, use your blades to set this on fire. And from here, you can get some more loot. There's still one more bit of loot you can get before you head back to the boats. Now you're done looting, head back to your boat and get back on the water. And you just want to head to that other beached area over to the right here to unlock these next wheels. 
with the area clear you just want to unlock this geyser and all you got to do is head over to it and interact with it with circle from here you just need to get a vantage point so turn around hook around to the left here and climb up this wall there'll be another enemy encounter just take care of these once dealt with just get your axe out and you want to get to this location here on the wall you don't want to hit the geyser that you unlocked you instead want to hit the one that's at the top here just aim until you get that indicator with the two blue icons throw your axe and that's going to freeze that geyser making the other one have more pressure to open the wheels as you head through the unlocked gate just left is another barrel Continue until you reach this fork, and right is another barrel. Now from here, if you go straight ahead, the game wants you to head to the right to continue the quest, but there is an optional area, and it's over by this big wheel that you can see over here. Just head to the left there, and you're able to go under this bridge. Once docked, we're now going to find our first legendary chest. You can see the Norner chest right in front of us. We're not going to cover that just yet. Instead, we're going to head left here and climb up this wall. Once at the top, just head left again and you can see the legendary chest. Once you kill the enemies that spawn, you'll be able to open this chest. After this legendary chest to spin round and we're going to go and find some lore which is just straight ahead. Good thing you learned the runes brother. From here, we just want to make our way back to the Norna chest. You can turn around here and drop down. There will be a lot of enemies to kill. But once killed, just head right and you'll be back in the Norna chest area. You might also notice this hanging basket from up above. So shoot that down for a little bit of extra loot. And then it's time to solve the Norna chest. This Norna chest is just like the other one where you do need to find three items to get it open, but it's not statues or vases this time to smash. Instead, you're looking for spinners. You're able to spin these items and you're going to have to find these three symbols. So we're going to call it a D, a B, and an N. These are the three symbols that we need to find, but this could be different on your game. I've seen playthroughs where, or other videos where these are different for different people. So just take a note of what symbols you have, and then it's still going to be the same way of opening it. You just got to find those three symbols on the three spinners. And I'm going to show you where the first spinner is now. So again, we're just taking note of those three icons, and the first spinner is just over to the right there. There's some water that's kind of disturbing the uh, vision of it, but we can just fire the axe right through it to spin it and if we get the right angle we can have a look at the icon i can just see that that's like a t there so we're going to hit this once to the left and that looks like the d so that covers the first icon on the norner chest which we can double check by looking at it and you can see that it's now vanished now the second spinner is just this way again but take a left and you're looking at this wooden platform and you'll notice the second spinner here so we're just going to spin this round until we find another icon that we need r is not one of them b is one of them so if we head back to the norna chest we should see that two out of three are now blanked out we just need one more and the third and final spinner can just be found by heading back to the boat and taking a right back up this climbable object here and just look right straight away for the third spinner. So we're just looking for the end now. And there we have it. So that opens the Norner chest. Now the first one gave us an apple. This one is going to give us a horn and increase our rage meter. And that brings an end to this optional area. Atrius will even inform you that it's the end. You've collected everything by suggesting that you get going. Everything is now collected. Head back to the boat and continue the quest.
as you head out from under the bridge, just go straight ahead and you're going to find another barrel to break. Keep moving forward and just around the corner in this area to the left, there's another barrel to break. You'll finally come to the third and final gate that you need to pass through. Just head round to the right here to Beach. Once Beach, you are going to see this Ormo right in front of you. This enemy is hard to kill because while it's facing you, it's just going to hide no matter what you do. Atrius will suggest flanking it and that's all you got to do. Just run straight ahead and hop over this ledge. Hop over this one and when the Ormo respawns, just get your axe, aim at it and kill it from behind. This is going to drop some loot for you. With the armor killed and loot collected, just follow the path round. And you need to lower this by aiming your axe at the circle up there and breaking it. Once you hop over this, you'll see a chain right in front of you. Just pull the chain to open half of the gates. Once opened, you just want to hop over here and you need to freeze this geyser. This is going to enable you to hop over the other side. And it's going to be a fight to the left. So just deal with these enemies. With the enemies defeated, Atreus is going to ask you to uncover this geyser. But before you do that, just so you don't forget it, just run back this way. It's just where you froze that geyser and jumped over it. You're going to find a little bit of loot. Now go and uncover that geyser. Just get into this position, press circle, and you'll pull the HUD off. Once you've uncovered this geyser, you want to head back to the first geyser, and you're going to want to freeze it again. By freezing it this time with that other one uncovered, there'll be enough pressure for that to spin the wheel and lower this lift. However, it's not low enough for you. You do need to break the lift now. So head back to where you were. You're going to notice that there's a circle there. Now, you're going to be very quick because you need to call your axe back and quickly throw it again to destroy it. If successful, the lift will drop. If not, you'll have to do the routine again. Now, just call your axe back and you'll be able to jump onto the lift this time and once you're on top of it you want to freeze the second geyser one more time so that the lift takes you up once at the top there's a little bit of loot here for you to get so make sure you pick up this red coffin and just to the left of that is an artifact that's one of Cavassia's poems very highbrow you should collect any others you find. And after you've collected those, just head to the chain here to open the gate fully. With the gate now open, you're able to head back to your boat and continue on with your quest. Remember, as you head through the third and final gate, there's still some items to explore. We can start here with this glow on the water to find a circle interaction. From here, just turn left, and you'll notice a barrel to destroy right in front of you. And then just hey, keep on cool. rowing until you reach the city. Oh. There are... Once you're docked, there's a little bit of exploring to do, so just run straight ahead. Head up the ramp here, and you'll see this water wheel. When you see that, climb up the ledge, and we're going to find another one of Odin's... Um, ravens and some hack silver. Climb up here. The hack silver is right in front of you. And then just to the right of that is one of Odin's ravens. So get your axe, take aim, and fire. Now from here, you're meant to drop down and go and interact with Sidri to continue the quest. However, before you do that, there's another bit of lore to find just right of that location on the floor here. You're nearly ready to speak to Sindri, but before you do, just open the blue chest next to him for some more loot. Thank you. 
These blue chests will appear in numerous locations and they act like a postmaster. If anything drops off like an uh, enemy kill or you're in an area where you're never going to be able to go back to and you miss some important items, they'll be delivered to this blue chest for you to collect later. Once you've done that, just chat with Sindri. Sindri is gonna upgrade Atreus's bow so we can now use sonic arrows and these are very handy and it enables us to do a little bit more exploring as part of the cutscene you'd have been shown how to use them on a blockage here you'd have fought some enemies just after that cutscene you have to speak to Sindri again and after that you're free to explore start off by aiming at this right next to Sindri and pressing square this is gonna uncover some loot From here, you want to head back all the way to the dock. There's going to be a collectible for you to get, an artifact that is, and some more loot. Another of Cavassia's poems. Now you just want to head back to the tunnel that you uncovered in the cutscene of Sindri. But before you do, it's a great time to do some upgrades and anything else that you may want to do. Sindri or the shop will now be selling resurrection stones as well as they just got unlocked. You'll get your first resurrection stone for free, but after that they cost 1500 hack silver each. You're now going to be ready to enter the passage. As soon as you emerge from the passage, you may notice that loot chest just over to your right. The first time I encountered this, I spent ages trying to figure it out, but it is unobtainable for now. Notice that up there, if you've played the game before, you know that you need a spear that you get later in the game in order to attach to that to swing over. So you might have to come back later in the game if you do want to get that chest. However, from the passage that you come out of, there is a collectible to get, and it's just over here, hidden behind these breakable objects. Just break these and push forward, and you're going to see the artifact right in front of you. A firebomb from the chief anti-Odin propagandist in Durland's Rebellion. Quite a sharp wit she had until she turned to less subtle means of resistance. And just to the right here, there's a gate that you can destroy with the sonic bow. So hold L2 and square, and inside there's a loot chest. Now just head back to the block bridge where we were just a few moments ago, and directly across from that you can use sonic arrows on this, and you can proceed forward. Once you reach this house, you need to go inside. There's going to be a dwarf in there playing an instrument that you need to speak to. There's also a bug here that's appeared to happen to me. This dwarf sh should have like a quest icon above his head and I should be able to press circle to interact. That's not the case. So if this also happens to you, just press options and click on restart checkpoint. It will load you back in right outside the door. So just press circle on it again. And this time around, you should be able to interact with him to continue the quest. Once you have finished the interaction, you're able to press triangle again to unlock your first favour in the game called In Service of Asgard. I highly recommend that you do this because this side quest done early on is going to give you some powerful early game armour. We're going to leave this favour for now and continue on with this main quest walkthrough, but I do also cover all favours in a separate guide playlist that is linked down in the video description. Now just head out of the left door and continue on the main quest. As you exit the door, Sindri is going to give you a Dwarven Compass, which is great because you're going to have a compass at the top of your screen now, which will make it easier to navigate. You're also going to find some hack silver if you just take the left bridge here.
once you've collected that hack silver just follow the path you're gonna find this mystic gateway that you unlock and just jump on the boat to continue your quest again you're gonna get some loot while you're on the boat just look out for that you've got a barrel here for hack silver as you go through the tunnel there'll be another barrel for some hack silver and you'll eventually get to this intersection. The main quest wants you to take the left. But the side quest that you picked up. The favour and service of Asgard. That's going to want you to go to the Bay of the Bounty to the right. Now we're not going to cover that side quest in this video. There'll be a separate video for that. Uh, but you do want to do that as soon as you can. So if you've picked up that quest. If you forgot to get it off of the door. You'll get it automatically at this point. Go and complete that quest. The reason for it is that you get some great early game armor if we take a look at it i've completed this quest and you get this armor here it's very very good for early game you get the placket if we go to the wrist armor you also get the arm guards and on the wrist armor you also get the waist guard very good armor for end game highly recommended so do this side quest before you continue even though we won't be covering that side quest in this walkthrough today, we will cover a few collectibles that are easily gotten at this point, including this one right in front of us, which is an Yggdrasil Jew. From here, there is another Yggdrasil Jew to collect. It's a little bit of a row away though. You can see the location we are on the map now. You're going to want to head north past the watchtower. And once you pass that, you're going to be heading east into this area over here. Make your way there for another Yggdrasil Jew. You'll notice while heading north, this little hole in the wall. If you go through this, you know you are on the right path. As soon as you're through that, just keep to the right, hugging the wall, and you'll get there. You'll eventually see this little island with a tree on, and the Yggdrasil Jew is just to the left of that on a branch. With both of those collectibles in hand, just make your way back to where you got the first one, where you originally came to this fork in the river, and now continue the path to the main quest. You'll get this barrel of hack silver right away. And after that barrel right in front of you is your objective. It's Derlin's house. But before we go to our objective, just take a right here. There's going to be another Yggdrasil Jew. The only way to travel by Odin's ravens is by your own choice. Oh, it's not so bad then. Straight after collecting that, just to the left is somewhere where you can beach up to get a red coffin. Head back to Derlin's house where your objective is, but again, just go straight past that for the final bit of loot in this mist on the water. Now we are done with all of the loot, we can head into Derlin's house to start a cutscene. After the cutscene, you'll learn that he's given you a map to Tia's location. Just exit through this door to continue the quest. There's now going to be a battle with quite a lot of enemies, so just take care of all of them. After the area is clear and from the door that you came out of, there's going to be a red coffin and some hack silver to collect. From the red coffin, just back up for the hack silver. You need to use the sonic arrows on this to get through. And you'll now be ready to move on through this large gate. I think I see something. 
You'll reach this train, but there is a little bit more loot to get first. A red coffin and some more hack silver. You might notice that mystic gateway, I think it is, in front of us. We're not able to progress there yet until we unlock the spear later in the game. Now looted up, you can interact with the train. You, you will go on a short train ride before getting off. And as soon as you get off the train, there's going to be an Odin's Raven right in front of you. This time it's moving now. So you will need to take your time, aim and fire. Just watch its path. Get your aim where it's going to be heading. And when it gets there, fire to kill it. You might find it easier to get the Odin to come down the ramp and get closer to its approach here. Continue on the walkway until you see the broken train up ahead. And there's going to be an artifact in this area. Just run and climb this ledge and take a left. Activated, but yes, likely one belonging to Barry the dwarf, builder of the great hall, Lua. From the artifact, there is also a Norner chest, but this can't be done right now. If you just jump over this ledge here, you'll find the chest. You need to come back here later in the game once you've got the spear. So for now, we're just going to carry on with the quest, and you do so by going through this hole in the wall. There's going to be a boss fight now. This is going to be your first encounter with a Drekki. Now for the first part of this fight, the Drekki will have no unblockable attacks. So in theory, you can just keep your shield out and block everything to learn its moves. It's going to be quite hard to parry the Drekki, so maybe not worry about that so much. Just be ready to block and attack when you can to get it down to half health. At half health, the Drekki does introduce an unblockable attack, which was that electric one that you just saw. It's a good idea just to get out the way when you notice it about to do that. Otherwise, it can hurt a little bit. It'll also pound at you like that and jump through the air to be careful of that. That attack is blockable, though. Apart from that one where it does the electric attack, everything's blockable. And it's just a case of dealing more damage to finish the fight off. Once the Drekki is killed and you've picked up all of the loot, find this hole in the wall to proceed. After the gap in the wall, the game is going to want you to go south. But we're not going to do that because we want loot. We're going to take a right and head up here to find some hack silver on the ground. We are then going to climb up this ledge to find some lore and some more hack silver. Unintended, I imagine. Just behind the rune reed is the hack silver on the ground. Just right of this is a bridge, and if we cross this bridge, there's going to be a chest to open. And then from the chest, just turn around to jump across this gap into a campsite. And there's going to be a scroll on the ground to your right. And from that scroll, there is a little bit more hack silver behind you. Just come up the hill here. It's next to the dead body. With all that collected, we can head back to where we came through this hole in the wall and straight ahead where we look down at the mine, just jump down for some more hack silver. Now just proceed and you're going to be jumping over some ledges. As you get over this ledge, you'll then be climbing up to your left. Before you head left and up that ledge to continue the quest of the train, notice this ledge here in the red coffin. You can press circle to dangle and circle to get across. And you'll be able to loot it.
you'll have to go back up the other ledge here as the other ledge is too high and then just proceed as we were up this ledge and forward to the train there is going to be an enemy encounter here and a hive that you need to destroy so just do these first and once done you can interact with the train as you interact with the train, Atreus is going to help you fix it so you can get it moving. There'll be a cutscene and an interactable sequence before you eventually get off. After the cutscene, you're going to arrive at the mines. There's going to be some enemies to kill. And you're now on your search for Tyr at the mines. But obviously, there's going to be a lot of loot to get here. So as soon as you're out of the cutscene and you've uh, defeated all of the enemies, come back up to this railway track where you spawn in on. And to the right, use Atreus's sonic arrows to get rid of these stones. And you'll find some hack silver. Directly from that, just turn around, stick to the railway, go all the way to the end of the path here. You're going to notice these boards. Break these for some more hack silver. You'll find some more hack silver just south from here next to this large wheel. There is going to be some more enemies around this area though, so just take them out first. Once the enemies are done, again use Atreus's sonic arrow to get rid of the stones and you'll find that hack silver. And then just west from here, there's some more hack silver in this chest. Now just spin around and take this chain to the bottom on the right. You're going to find an artifact. The whetstone of the night, Ripper. When resisting an occupation, sometimes the most obvious methods are the best. It is old. No longer of use. But enough about you. I'm talking about the whetstone. And just to the right of that artifact is some more hack silver. <laughs> and we are nearly ready to move on now. We've got one more thing to get. And if you just look out to this lake, you're going to see one of Odin's ravens flying around. You see, he makes a close approach to you here. So on that approach, just kill it. Make your way back up the chain to continue, run straight ahead and up this ledge and then you want to use the sonic arrows again just to clear your path here and there will be some enemies to take out. Proceed until you reach these two explosive vases. If you destroy this one on the right first you're going to get some hack silver. And then you want to destroy the one on the left here to progress, however there will be an enemy encounter. Just proceed through that small gap you uncover, but don't forget this hack silver pouch on the right. You lost control. We were falling. And as you exit the tunnel, you'll be in a brand new area with a hack silver pouch right in front of you. As you jump down the ledges, just to the left here is some more stone you can get rid of with the sonic ammo. That'll get you some more hack silver. And after the hack silver, you just need to complete this puzzle. It's very easy with your axe. If you just use your axe in this spot here, that's going to stop the water and the lift will lower. This allows you to jump across and we find a Norna chest. Before we do the Norna chest, if you just drop down to the left here, you will find this red coffin. And we'll now solve the Norna chest. This does need to be done in a particular order on this one. Because there's one torch here that you've got to ignite. However, if you do this first now, water's going to go back on it and turn it off. So you want to leave this one till last. Just recall your axe if you haven't already. And notice the water will come down on this wheel and cover that torch we need to light. But it's just revealed another torch that we need to light over this gap here. So jump across. Go and light this torch with your blades. And whilst here, just look left of that torch for some collectible lore. It's cooperative in large scare quotes. And then we're going to jump across the gap again to go and finish the Norna chest off. It's okay to do this one now, but you do want to get your axe back up above to stop the water. So it's going to jump up this ledge here. 
You'll notice the torch is already lit because I made a mistake when I was doing it. But light this torch here with your blades. And then get your axe out. You're going to want to stop that water again. Once the water is stopped, you can get your blades back out. Jump down the ledge and light the final torch. This will open a Norna chest for your reward. You're now safe to continue, so just head south with Atreus and follow the path. At this location here, you're going to need to help Atreus up this ledge. And right next to that is some hack silver on the ground here. Father, there's a gate up here heading... Now you may have noticed the red coffin over to the right. We can't get that just yet, so don't worry about it. We do need to progress here though. So what you want to do is press square for Atreus to lower this bridge. And you want to use your axe to freeze the cog. Jump that? Your knees aren't that bad. Petraeus. With it frozen, you can get across. Can now just jump across this gap and you won't be able to progress because of this stone. But turn to your right here and with your blades, you can just interact with this. That's going to change the direction of the water flow and bring this stone down for you. It also lifts this stone right in front of you so you can jump through. Now just equip your axe again, and we need to lower this stone again now that we're through. So just do that by throwing your axe there to freeze the water. Once it's low enough, you'll be able to interact with circle to get on top. Retrieve your axe back and use it as a lift. Just jump across and help Atreus with the door, and then we're going to have some more looting to do. As soon as you get through the door, just head right. You'll jump across this, and then you want to jump down this ledge here to find that red coffin that we saw earlier. And then on your way back up, just look left for some hack silver. And now it's time to proceed to the mines. Just head back up where you just open this gate with Atreus and follow Atreus along the path. There's going to be a cutscene with Sindri once you go through this section here. After the cutscene with Sindri, there will be an enemy encounter, so deal with that. And then we're just going to get the remaining loot before we push forward to go and find Tia. Now, from here, just where you came through and spoke to Sindri, you just want to take a right and follow this around, and you've got a hack silver chest just here on the left and now we want to get an artifact of the legendary chest to do this you'll notice this explosive vase to the right of that hack silver chest just explode that and then from here you can use your blades just to press circle and interact with this this is going to make a large rock come towards you over in this direction. Once it's in position, you'll be able to jump up on top of it. Once in position, just jump up on top of it. And now you want this to go back to its original position. And to do this, just use your axe to freeze the end here. Now stop the water flow and move you back to where you need to be for this legendary chest and artifact. Takes a little bit of a while, but once here, you can see the new area down below. Just press circle to hang off this rock. Press circle again to traverse across. And just follow this railway track. You'll see the artifact up ahead, so just collect that. More inspiring lyricism from the mind of Thrasia. And then just right to the artifact is your legendary chest. And now you are ready to go back to the mine entrance, so just turn around. Rather than do all that again, just left here is a zip wire, just take that. And we are now ready to continue. Just as you jump up this ledge, there is some more hack silver. You may have already noticed it just up above there. Just with your axe, shoot that to make it drop. And there is a law plaque to the right of us here, but we're missing the special equipment at the minute and able to do that. So don't worry about that for now. 
But there's another hack silver bucket to the left of it here. So again, just get your axe out and make that drop. And there's an enemy encounter, so deal with that. Once dealt with, there's some more hack silver on this dead body at the end here. Now we're going to proceed through this gap here. Once we drop down, there is going to be an enemy encounter. So just continue the path and deal with the enemies when you get there. And once the enemies are defeated, just get rid of these stones with the sonic arrow. And you're going to want to proceed through this gap. After you get out of this gap, there is going to be a boss fight kind of against a Bergstra. Now, this fight can be a little tough on higher difficulties, so do drop it if you need to. You're going to have loads of these little enemies, which are quite annoying, but dead easy to kill, spawn. And Berkshire will keep on spawning these, so you're going to constantly have to deal with them. You can use Atreus to deal with them by pressing square, though, to make it a little bit more easier. And while we're at a distance from the Berkshire, use your axe in advantage to get the health down a little bit. Just keep throwing at it, retrieving it, and keep going. It'll take a while for the Berkshire to catch up to you, but by the time she has, you would have took some health off of her, and notice one of her, of her attacks is to spit at you with poison. So make sure you're dodging that. Another top tip here is if you would use the ledges to your advantage, you'll notice that when the Berkshire jumps up or down ledges, it does take a quick breath. So what we're going to do is just wait at the top of this ledge. And once the Bergshire jumps up this, we can go in for a few free hits before she catches her breath. She does have an unblockable attack there, as you just saw. Look out for that and double parry, sorry, double roll away when you got to. And there's the spawn of some more of the little enemies. You see we got it half down already. Once you've cleared the area, you will need to take a nearby boat. But if you do want to get some loot first, there's this bucket up top here. You can get down with your axe. Let's get some hack silver from that. And then right behind that, or Shattered Rune rather, right behind that there was some stone here that you need to destroy with the Sonic Arrow. So destroy that for some hack silver. And then that's all there is. So make your way forward to the boat and a cutscene. Once off the boat you've got an opportunity to upgrade. So take this now while you can. And once upgraded, just go up to the left pass where Atreus goes, and you need to cross this gap. Before you do that though, just to the right, just have Atreus open his door with a sonic arrow, and there's a rune reed inside. Whoever wrote this certainly had an eye for detail. And then to cross this gap, what you want to do is have Atreus remove the stones blocking the water flow. Just use the sonic arrow with square. And then once the water is flowing, you now want to freeze it so that the water comes down and spins this wheel. Just aim your axe, throw it and freeze it there. The water will overflow onto the wheel, lifting up this for you. Let's get to the door. Now just cross over the gap and go through the door right in front of you. And you're going to find this red coffin straight ahead. Now, just from the coffin right behind you, just have Atreus open up this passage with a sonic arrow and squeeze through it. And once out the other side, you'll have some hack silver right in front of you. Now, just jump over the gap of Atreus and there will be an enemy encounter. And once you're dealt with, rather than take the left at this fork, take a right and smash through these wooden planks and you're going to find another collectible lore. After the Lord, just jump back up and keep on following this winding path all the way round. You'll get up to this bridge that you need to cross with Atreus, but just keep on going because it's a hack silver chest. Having got your hack silver, return to the bridge and cross it with Atreus. And you'll come up to this fork. To the right, there's some gold stones that we can't get through. To the left is the next puzzle. Now, if we do go left a little bit, it will reveal an explosive vase. You can use your axe to make this explode. And that gets rid of the gold blocks so we can make our way into this area here for a collectible. Once you duck under this and crawl through, there is an enemy encounter. So be sure to take care of the enemies. 
And with the enemies defeated, we've got some loot to get. So from the entrance where you came in, notice the blue lit up area here. Just swing across, and to the left is some hack silver. From the hack silver, just climb up the ledge on the right, and you're gonna notice a hand basket in front of you hanging. Just break that down to get your loot. And just past that, you're gonna notice an explodable vase here. Just use your axe to explode that for another hack silver chest. And then make your way to a large door in the area. You're going to be able to go through this door to get a collectible and a red coffin. The red coffin is right in front of you as you enter to the right. And then just spin around from that, climb the ledge to get the collectible. A statue. Made for the Aesir. Indeed. And then stolen by Ulfjolf, the thief. Now, there's more we can do in here, but later in the game, we don't have the spear yet, so we're not able to cross. So we're just going to head back now to continue this quest. So back at the fork now on the bridge, we're just going to head left to do the water puzzle. So first, just drop down to the ledge on the right. You're going to have a red coffin and some hack silver. And then climb up the chain in front of you. At the top of the chain, jump up again to find some more hack silver on the ground. And then from here, you can use your blades to stop the water flow. With the lift at the top, you can now back up back to the start where you were. And from here, we want to use our axe to freeze that water flow and spin this wheel. You can now swing across to the other side, and then what you want to do is recall your axe back because the lift is at the top. To bring this down, we just want to freeze the water up above us to the right here. The lift will lower. You can open the door to get on the lift, and once you're in Atreus are inside, just call your axe back to raise the lift. Once at the top and you exit the lift, before you go through the door, just take a left for this hack silver box. And then proceed through the big door. Before we jump down, there's some hanging baskets that we can shoot just to get some loot for when we're down there. One's just to the left side there. And then one's just up to the right here. Jump down the ledge and there'll be an enemy encounter. Once the wretches are clear, you just need to interact with this dead body in the crack in the wall, just left of where you dropped into the area. However, before we do that, do just pick up any health gems or loot that we've got in the area. Obviously, we did those two hanging baskets earlier, so we've got some hack silver about or whatnot. So just collect anything around on the floor around here, and then proceed to interact with the dead dwarf. Once you interact with the dead dwarf in the wall, you're going to get your first relic. Just follow the instructions to equip this, and then there'll be another enemy encounter for you to test it, to test it out on. With all the enemies clear, you're now able to proceed through that gap in the wall where the dead dwarf and relic was. Once you get through the gap, you'll follow the path of Atreus, and you'll notice this hanging basket. Just to the left of that is some hack silver. And now you'll just want to use the sonic arrow to empty this basket to allow you and Atreus to swing across. Once you swung across, just make sure you interact with this to create a shortcut in case you come back here at a later date. And then we just want to continue following the curved path around. Now, the quest wants you to keep on going straight to this zip line. You'll use the chain and go down. Before we do that, obviously we've got some stuff to get. So just backtrack to here and you'll notice this water and chain to swing across. And once you swing across, there's going to be some hack silver right in front of you. So just grab that. And we're going to want to head to that room now. We can see through this window, but just back up. We're going to take a left down this ledge. Just before that, there is some loot in this basket to get. Just knock that down and jump down for some more loot. Some more hack silver right in front of you. And to, to the right, there's a collectible. Just use your sonic arrow to remove all the stone and collect your collectible. A 
statue. Not just any statue. That stony visage hung over the entrance to the World Mill, built by Durin the Generous. I believe that's all of the rebel artifacts. We can return to Brock whenever you're ready. And then from the artifact, we're going to go through this door on the right. This has got to start a new favor on the game. It's hole one for the Dragas. There's so many Draga holes you need to find and kill. And they spawn the hateful. They are hard enemies. And if you are struggling, I highly recommend that you drop the difficulty for these. Or just come back when you're a little bit stronger. But if you're happy to proceed, go through the door. As soon as you're in, the Draga is going to spawn from the hole. Now, your best bet on higher difficulties is to keep running around the area. Keep fighting at a distance. If it does get close, do your best. Dodge all of its attacks. It is going to put you on fire as well. And it will spawn enemies in like this while you're fighting it. So when he does spawn them in, you want to get them gone as quick as you can. They've got unblockable attacks. They are a little bit difficult. But kill them first. And to kill the smaller enemies, then go and do damage to the main hateful. The Hateful is going to have a range of attacks, so make sure you block him. He's got unblockable attacks as well. Getting close to him can sometimes mean you are going to take some damage, but you will get opportunities. You'll see him do the swinging attack. That's a good opportunity to dodge an attack when he does that. But just keep dodging, keep getting in damage. And as I said at the start, if for every reason you are really struggling, because I know I did, if the health bar is purple at the top, you should definitely come back later or drop the difficulty. Once you kill the hateful, you'll start the favor born from fire. And this is number one of that favor. You've got more Draugr holes to find and more hateful to kill. We'll probably cover that as we go through this guide. There'll be a separate video for that as well on the channel covering them all for you. So make sure you collect the hateful loot that it drops because there's a lot of it. And then in this area also, once you've got all of the loot from the pit, just climb up and you're going to notice this legendary chest that you can open. With the legendary chest collected, you can now head back to that zip line that we got to earlier. At the zip line, you just want to use a sonic arrow down below to clear the rocks off the rope and then just pull the chain. You can now use the zip line to get across. Now for this puzzle, you just want to jump across the ledge to the left from where you land off the zip line and boost Atreus up on top of this ledge. So once Atreus is up and ready for the next part of the puzzle, just jump back across the gap and we're going to want to freeze the water here to make that wheel spin. So just freeze where I do, that's going to make the wheel spin. But we need to keep that in place now and we need to retrieve our axe while it stays in place. Now to do this, if we look up at Atreus, we can press square. He's going to spin this wheel, which is going to get some rocks into this water path and they're going to get stuck together on that ice once they're stuck you can retrieve your axe and you'll notice that the stones keep the water overflowing and keep the wheel spinning we're now able to look to our right and we can see that there's something in front of us to get across to however we need to get there first and to do that with our axe just freeze the water here to spin this wheel that wheel will spin lifting up this crane meaning we've got something to swing on to get across now we are across, what we can do is just remove that axe to bring it back. We don't need that crane anymore. But you'll want Atreus to destroy the rocks you just got stuck prior. So aim at them, press square. They'll get destroyed. And now this will move back to where you want to do. So you can jump the gap. Now with the water puzzle completed and where we need to be, there's another door to go through. But before that, we've got an Odin's Raven just to the left of us. Make sure we collect that first. And then with the raven dead, we just want to go to the left of the main door and we're able to shimmy across this ledge. You may have recognized this area from earlier because there's this door over here that we weren't able to open. Uh, just walk forward and you're now able to open the door so we do come back at a later date. You've, got, you've created a shortcut. But just once the door's open, turn around. You've got some hack silver on the floor next to this body and a hack silver chest. With that collected, shimmy back across to where that big door was and you want to enter the door. Upon opening the door, the game wants you to take a left and go through that gap there, but don't miss this red coffin to the right.
then proceed to go through the gap. Once through the crawl space, you'll notice this big door. You're going to need to use Atreus's sonic arrows just to destroy these latches. And once all four are destroyed, you can proceed to open the door. When you do try and open the door, though, you're going to encounter a new enemy. These enemies are easy enough, but they do come with Bifrost attacks now. You'll notice the Bifrost attack because they'll glow purple. If these attacks do hit you, then the Bifrost is going to go on your health bar, and Bifrost heals over time, but follow-up hits can detonate it for extra damage. It's the same way that it works against enemies when you get Bifrost attacks later in the game, and it's a very OP attack. So try and dodge these. Whenever you do see the purple glowing on their weapons or on their attacks, be sure to dodge as long as you dodge them they are really not that difficult to kill once the enemies are defeated you are able to open this door for a lengthy cutscene tear flees and after the cutscene you need to take out some more of these enemies with the enemies dead be sure to pick up any health stones and break through this wall here and keep progressing there'll be another enemy encounter along the way and after they are dead, you'll be able to grapple up and go through this wall. Again, you're going to have some more enemies, including this new enemy type. Just a bit of a tank, but just block and kill. If those enemies dead, again, pick up any health stones, and then you want to crawl through this gap. Just follow the path, and you'll eventually reach Tia and Atreus. After the cutscene and when you can regain control, it's a short way up here on the left, it's hard to miss, is a hack silver chest. And just right at a hack silver chest is some hack silver on the floor to, over to the right. And then from that hack silver, just follow Tia and Atreus, but there is this ledge on the left here. Climb up it for some more hack silver. And then just follow Tia and Atreus until you get to this lift. Tia will bring the lift down for you and you'll proceed to take the lift to the service. Once you get to the service and you exit the lift, you can see a hack silver chest to the right there, right in front of you. Just climb up this ledge to get it. And after the hack silver chest, just follow Tia and Atreus, and then you're going to encounter some enemies. If the enemy's dead, you're going to push forward to this barge and interact with it, which will start a cutscene. Once you're on the other side of this barrage, you're going to have to go to a mystic gateway. However, an enemy's going to try and stop you, so just clear the enemies first. And with the enemy dead, you're right back to where we started this quest. We can now interact with the gateway to finish it. You'll now be heading back to Sindri's home. You can spend all the loot that you just got on upgrades or whatnot before starting the next quest, Old Friends. And that's all for me for now. Thank you for watching this guide today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If it has helped you, be sure to hit like and share to support. Subscribe for more. And i got a playlist of every single main quest with all loot collectibles and everything down in the video description and pinned comments. Again, thank you for watching. And until next time, stay safe and peace out.